Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and if you are currently experiencing groin issues, you have injured your doctor, you've pulled anything up inside your business here, you've got acute groin issues, then you need to make sure you rehab it properly and build strength back into it, otherwise you're going to keep having recurring problems with it. So, very first thing that we want to do is test your range first of all. So what Jenny's going to do is set herself up into a lunge position. Be really slow as you do this, okay? So I'm going to assume that you're feeling really pinchy right now. And what Jenny's doing here is literally rocking herself from side to side. She's having a wiggle in the position and she's seeing how the groin actually feels and what movements feel a bit funky or pinchy. So if you're at a stage where this is even painful to you, you should not be resuming regular training. You should not be squatting or lunging or any of that stuff. You wanna hang out here for a bit and rock side to side. So we'll say, we'll give for a rep scheme 10 rocks, but I would prefer that you really give yourself more body awareness about it and move around until you feel like you're maybe relaxing things or making a bit of a change. What Jenny can do from there is lift up the same side arm as the um, injured side and see where she can get her elbow down to. If you are 100% fine, you want to be able to have your elbow down the floor beside your heel. If you're feeling very stiff, do not try and force it at all. Just see where you can get to for that day and over time try and improve that. If it's only one side you're having issues with, then you could use the other side as a tester. So if Jenny swaps over quickly for me to the other side, do both sides anyway but you'll probably see that you get more range on the side that wouldn't be sore than the side um, that is currently having the issues. So test that and see what both sides are like. And again, give yourself that wiggle. And this is just a great exercise to do in general. You'll probably see quite a lot if you follow us. Um, so that's where you want to start with 10 little wiggles in that position and open things up and see how things feel. Then we want to start putting a bit of strength into things, okay? If you feel like this is too much for you, hang out here. If you're okay to move on, then what Jenny's gonna do is stagger her stance a little bit. She's got one leg out straight and the other one is completely straight up and down. So her knee is underneath her hip here. What she's gonna do now with this foot that's away, um, which is further from me right now, she's actively gonna push that into the ground, okay? Just a little tiny bit. You can, you can do more as you practice it, but just give yourself just a little bit so you become aware of the adductor having to actually work. So her toes are pointing forward right now. She's pushing into the ground a little bit and she's going to rock back and forward five times, keeping that little bit of pressure on as she's doing that, okay? So you're not just rocking back and forth, trying to stretch here, you're trying to make the muscle work, okay? So these are really important things to start doing, like I said, before you resume regular training. If you can't cope with this, you're not ready to lift things or run or any of that stuff, okay? So five times forwards and backwards with the toes point forwards, then, Point your toesies up to the sky. Remember, muscles move in all different ways, so you can catch a little bit of a different position here. Five times, forwards and backwards, again, like that. Nice and slow, keep pushing in that little bit the whole time, okay? So again, you're not just rocking back and forward, you're actively pushing in the whole time. You should be really aware of the muscle working. Once you've done your five rock back and forward, then we may as well switch the bum on while we're there. So Jenny's gonna point the toes back forward again. She's gonna lift her leg up a little bit, try and not open up with the hips, and she's just gonna move the leg backwards and forwards, just a little bit, again, five times. Two, three. So what you can find sometimes, just for want of a better description, is that your bum can almost switch off, okay? Um, a little bit, so if you can make the muscles fire again, you may start to stop walking like a weirdo and all this here kind of stuff as well. So your body, especially if you hurt in there, is gonna start compensating in all kind of weird ways. You're gonna shift your weight and do all this here kind of stuff. So make sure you switch your bum on as well. Your doctors and your bum work very closely together, so it's really important to work on them, okay? So again, after you've done your deep lunge wiggles, again, you do both sides pushing in, rocking back and forward five times with the toe pointed forwards, and then the toesies up to the sky. It's hard to not want to sink up there to do the same thing. <laughs> so forwards and backwards, oh, we're losing the microphone. Forwards and back, and keep that tension on the whole time. Awesome, and then after you've done your five, then toes pointed back forward again, lift up, move back to get the buns going. So work with that circuit. If you could do it three times, absolutely great. If you feel like once is enough, then the next day see how you feel. Always go based on the next day. If you feel particularly sore the next day, like you're aggravating things further from doing simple movements like this, then just ease off, give it more rest. But as, as you start to work on these, you should hopefully start to feel that things start to feel a bit better. And once you have worked through that and you can do three full circuits, then what you want to see long-term as Jenny goes back to her deep lunge again, is that she's able to get that full range down to where she was able to get to on both sides. So the range is back in there. If we go to, um, the straddle position as well. 
from there that she's actually able to move this bottom knee out a bit further. So there's more of a stretch position here going on here and she's able to really push into the ground like quite hard, like with like 50% effort of really pushing in. She's really able to make that wake up and she's able to cope with good pressure there with the foot forward and the foot up as well. Make sure you're able to push down into that. And then the full variation would be a Copenhagen plank or if Jenny just does a side plank position for me and she puts all of her weight onto the top leg, she's actually supporting her body weight with the adductor here. So see how she's lifted the bottom leg here? She has all her weight on that leg there, so all in the thigh there, and she's able to support her full body weight in this position. That's how you'll know that you've rehabbed it properly and that you're actually able to resume your full training again, okay? So if this is something you usually struggle with now and um, before you've even picked up an injury, it's something you want to work on because it's going to give you more wiggle room and this is the stuff that people miss, um, especially people that would play football or just do a lot of running. This is the stuff that they miss out on. So you want to be able to support your full body weight with your adductor muscles, okay? So work on that circuit. Take your time with it, do not rush making it better um, and you'll find yourself long term not running into more issues a few months down the road. Okay guys?